Okay, so I just made a long video and realized instead of pressing record, I actually just took a picture. So I'm going to say the same thing again I just said. Um, new plan. Um, that barn shelter is a monstrosity. We built it in like a day when we got here out of wood we had um, so that they'd have a place to live and it just has been sufficient so we haven't done anything with it. Uh, but I don't like it. So I'm not going to add on to it for the alpacas. Uh, I'm going to build another one of these small movable sheds that I built. This I built this one for the goats. Um, but today one of my alpacas is enjoying. Hi, that is Pichu. And he is just chilling out and not liking me intruding on his space. So um, all this is, is I made these roof trusses. Um, I made three walls, kind of secured it together. I coated it in um, this kind of tongue and groove that I salvaged from that barn on yonder there that had fallen when we got here. So basically I'm gonna make one of these bigger than this, but smaller. I don't think you can see it over there. There's a horse version that I built um, that's bigger. This is smaller. I'm gonna build one in the middle. Um, if I add on to that, besides the fact that it's just irritating me to, that that's still there, it becomes even more useful and there's less of a chance that I'm going to get rid of it. So I got to go buy some wood. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so I went and got some wood. These are two by threes instead of two by fours. They're cheaper and ultimately will be lighter, making the whole structure a little easier to move. They're eight foot long. This is a six foot structure, so I got to cut six of these down to six feet that'll be the top and bottom plate of the side walls and the back wall the vertical braces the studs will be a little shorter so that the finished wall will still be six feet tall so we're going to cut these down go to town all right so next up i'm going to take these and i got to cut them down for the studs which means they're going to be six feet minus three inches so Here's my six foot mark, one, two, three, 69 inches. And the reason we're doing that is I want the finished wall to be six feet tall. So six foot stud would be six foot three wall because of the one and a half inch top plate and one and a half bottom plate because these two by threes are one and a half inches tall because true size of a Two by three is one and a half inches. So one and a half plus one and a half, three inches. So six foot, one, two, three inches down. And we're going to cut these studs, the remainder of these studs, not the remainder of these studs, many of these studs for the side wall and the back wall. Okay, so the wall assemblies are cut. One pile, one wall, two walls three walls, some assembly required. So I have studs, bottom plate, top plate. It'll be six foot, six foot. Same thing here, one through five, you know, slightly shorter, two six footers, two six footers, slightly shorter. So what I'm gonna do is the diagonal is gonna be four foot. That makes it efficient use of my eight foot here. It'll give me enough pitch off of my six foot wall. Um, it'll be fine for our needs. So what I did, this is eight foot. I measured to make sure it was eight foot. If it's not eight foot, it's a little longer sometimes. Just trim it up to eight foot if you care about being that exact. So I've got my exactly, I've got my exactly four foot measured square across the middle and then this is a two by three remember so it's two and a half inches wide and so an inch and a quarter <clears throat> wide is dead in the middle of the board and I put a little X there then I'll set my saw to the angle that I'm going to use I haven't quite figured out what that's going to be for the 
triangle I'm doing. I gotta go figure that out. And then I will cut that angle this way and that will be the right cut for two trusses. And I'll just flip it over, screw them together and that'll be a truss with a, you know, a horizontal piece from my excess okay, here. It's gonna be about 75 degrees at the that truss, which means I'm gonna set my saw to 15 degrees, because that's 90 minus 75. I figured that out, just simple trigonometry. If I'm looking for that angle, that's theta, that's gonna, I'm gonna use the cosine of theta because that's gonna be our adjacent leg over our hypotenuse. And I gotta use the inverse cosine of 1.4, which is about one and a third radians, 75 degrees. Okay, we're gonna assemble these trusses on my portable workbench. All right, so end of day one, I started this project around 3.30, 4 o'clock, spent about four hours on it, doing other things as I went. So I've got my six foot by six foot by six foot cube. Um, it was a little wobbly as I figured, so I just added these diagonal braces. I squared it up, diagonal, diagonal. It's pretty secure now, um, obviously, once the sheathing goes on and down here, right, corner to corner and corner to corner is going to go underneath the pressure treated skis going this way so I can move it easily. And then I built a bunch of these trusses that are gonna go Do this here. They're gonna go like this as long as the wind doesn't blow. So it's not centered, but there'll be some trusses here. Oh, one over one over each of my studs. Holy shit. <laughs> so that's about four hours of work uh, tomorrow. Get plywood to build the roof. And I'll show you how I'm going to put the roof on. I'm going to build the roof first, and then how I put the roof on this guy. By okay, it's a lovely day out here on the farm. It's raining, a little chilly, um, but we got to get structure built because they don't want to be in the rain any more than I do. So. Uh, this is what happens when somebody takes your, well, to be fair, her pickup truck to work. Uh, so I had to go and just strap to the roof. It's not far, it's not a big deal. Um, today we're going to cut those down to six feet, put them on these babies, flip this onto its back, and you'll see, you'll see some happening. So first, uh, one of my older gals out here needs a coat on because um, she gets cold. So um, most of these guys are capable to be without coat, but one of them, that, that one, that one, no, that one, that, that one. That one needs a coat, so I'm gonna put that on her, uh, and then we'll get to town on this. I had a slight break in the rain. It's still coming, but it's just spitting for a moment. So keep posted on what's happening here. Uh, so I cut off that two foot piece from the AP. So that's quick math, six feet. 
Uh, it's going on this half. I'm going to do the same exact thing on that other half. And that way I'll have uh, my roof is essentially assembled. A quick preview, I'll pull this onto its back, put the roof on. I got these long bolts, I'll just, they self-tap, pull it on nice and tight, then I'll flip it back onto its feet. Actually, before I flip it on its feet, I'll flip the skis on it. I'll show you guys that coming up. But now, boom, we're gonna do the other side. All right, welcome back. So, still working on the alpaca house. It was pretty sweet. I stumbled upon three sheets of this OSB that's super straight. No problems with it at all. Definitely not bowed. It doesn't matter. We'll fix it. They were free. Uh, so we're gonna um, we're gonna sheathe the whole outside. Uh, I'm gonna leave a gap about yay high, maybe foot on each side, for no other reason than. With those sheets, um, I'll run out of the amount of plywood. I'm not going to buy another sheet just for that. It's a house for an alpaca to keep them out of the sun and rain, and it will work. So, enjoy. So, <clears throat> we've got the alpaca house mostly finished. Uh, we're going to call it finished. Uh, I'll slap some paint on it um, at some point. I'm going to leave these sides open for the summer. And then I'll just cover them up when the winter comes. Um, before everybody goes crazy on me about the structural um, lack of integrity, perhaps. Let me remind everybody the parameters of the goals of this, um, this shed was um, lightweight, inexpensive, um, lightweight so that it's movable which it is so it's uh, just about light enough that I can pick it up by myself um, not pick it up and move it but you'll notice it's on these skis pressure treated skids with galvanized hardware so I can drag it and I'll show you doing that in a minute <laughs> 